We go to the final chapter on land use, forestry and agriculture. What are the plans from the European Commission on land use, forestry and agriculture? This is a short final chapter. You've, you're, you're almost there, almost a certified expert in the EU Green Deal. Um, but let, let me quickly take you through this. Um, so for land use and forestry, L-U-L-U-C-F, um, uh, so this does not include agriculture. There is now the no debit rule. So emissions from those sectors should equal removals between 2021 and 2025. Obviously land use and forestry also takes up a lot of um, emissions. Forestry, a tree is just a storage place for CO2. Um, so the, 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 the no debit rule states that those two should be in balance. Now, the idea for the period afterwards, towards 2023, is that there are net removals of 310 million tons uh, equivalent of CO2. That will mean that removals outweigh the emissions of the sector. Uh, and the, 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 the bar graphs are purely schematic here to, to, to simplify things. Uh, and it, for the period afterwards, there should, it, it, including agriculture, the total should be climate neutral. So. Um, with 310 million tons net removals by 2030, um, if you include agriculture in that calculation, there is not yet climate neutrality or, 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 or let's say a no debit situation. Um, that should be the case by 2035. So, um, um, and again, you see effort sharing because, because agriculture is a uh, ESR sector, an effort sharing regulation sector, you see effort sharing between member states. Some do more, some do less. Uh, and the key defining factor that determines whether, you, you, uh, whether countries have to do more or less is land mass. Because you need land, uh, basically um, space, to, to offset and store CO2 in forests, in, in undergrounds, in um, uh, peatlands, uh, and the Netherlands, for example, Denmark, Ireland, Malta, Slovenia, Cyprus, they're all small countries. So the potential there to do much is very limited. Um, whereas Sweden, Spain, Poland, Italy, France, the po population density is much lower in those countries and simply the landmass is much bigger. So there's a lot more potential there to, 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 um, uh, to make this equation work. These are some recommendations for, for the Netherlands to, to, although the Netherlands are still allowed to, to increase emissions a little bit. Um, it's, uh, it's all about re reducing methane emissions from livestock and, and soil, soil fertilization, um, um, the, uh, restoring peatlands to, to basically store more carbon in the underground, shift to the bio-based and circular economy, uh, foster sustainable forest management and afforestation, and also, um, yeah, forest protection and restoration of forest ecosystems. These, are, and probably there are plenty of, and specifically also for other countries, plenty of other opportunities uh, um, and um, measures that could be applied to, uh, to um, make this work. Um, quick summary, this was a short uh, final chapter, um, but uh, 310 million tons net removal is the target for LULCF per 2025. There's effort sharing among, among member states, including agriculture. The objective is to be climate neutral per 2035. And restoring peatlands and mitigating uh, methane emissions is, uh, at least for the Netherlands, part of, of um, and, um, um, forestry and reforestation is a, probably also a big uh, abatement option for many other countries. We don't have a lot of land here, but, but hey. Um, Let's see if there are any questions. What role does the prevention of deforestation outside the EU play in the EU Green Deal? Uh, now, this really deals with EU territory. Um, so um, I'm afraid not much, but uh, I have, to be honest, 12,000 pages of proposals and um, documents and um, um, uh, studies uh, was uh, on my desk a few weeks ago. There may be something on it. I have not seen it, but um, I'm sorry if I missed it. If you want to know more, uh, let me know. Um, contact on LinkedIn, send me a message. Happy to follow up in any way, shape or form. Keynotes, workshops, uh, run round tables or just some questions that you may have that I have not addressed. I try to address as much as possible. 
let me know. Um, as mentioned, these are the proposals. This is not final yet, and now we get to the phase where negotiations start. So this could take years. Uh, this will be in the headlines for a long, long time. As mentioned, as a bank, as ABN AMRO, we want to accelerate the en energy transition, both with knowledge in this way, uh, our through our bi-weekly updates that we provide. Again, contact Remco Jonkind for, for this. You can also ask me, I'll, I'll redirect and make sure you receive the bi-weekly update on these key themes. Um, in, the, um, in the energy transition. And if you want to uh, get in contact with any other uh, colleague, also on banking and uh, financial uh, questions, uh, or on the Green Deal or any other follow-up, feel free to call or mail any of my colleagues here. Um, uh, and and um, uh, for example, Björn Flate is the head of Energy Nordics. So um, if you're from the Nordics, if you're from Norway or, or, or uh, elsewhere in, in Scandinavia, contact him. Uh, there are many different disciplines here on the table. Um, they're happy to take up the phone or, uh, or reply you uh, via email or connect on LinkedIn. Um, happy to discuss uh, this further. Tomorrow this will be on YouTube. Um, so uh, if you missed anything or want to rewatch it, it will be available on the um, uh, LinkedIn channel of Circle NL, C I R C L N L. Um, and there will be a playlist with all the chapters that I just discussed. Again, the bi-weekly, let, let Remco know. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for sticking through. You're officially now an EU Green Deal expert. Uh, good night.